It's a long and a dusty road, a hard and a heavy load, and the folks that I meet ain't always kind. Some are bad and some are good. Some have done the best they could, and some have tried to ease my troubled mind. And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. Been wandering through this land, just doing the best I can. Trying to find what I was meant to do, and the people that I see look as worried as can be, and it looks like they are wandering too. And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Can't help but wonder. Well, I had a little girl one time. She had lips like sherry wine, and she loved me till my head went plumb insane. But I was too blind to see she was drifting away from me, and my good gal went off on the morning train. And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound. Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. If you see me passing by, and you sit and you wonder why, and you wish that you were rambling too. Nail your shoes to the kitchen floor, lace 'em up and bar the door, and thank your stars for the roof that's over you. And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound. Where Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. So the picking pattern for "Can't Help Wonder Where I'm Bound," um, we did the Johnny Cash version, and we're just trying to emulate the original that Johnny Cash did uh, for the ukulele. So basically, the theory of the picking pattern is that every chord transition. I was plucking all four strings at the same time. So resting your thumb on the G string, and then your other three finger one, two, and three, or index, middle, and ring finger, plucking up the way. So at the same time, and that's what's happening every chord transition. And on the end of each beat, I'm just pluck, uh, plucking up on the C string. So just get your D minor chord. And practice this for a little bit. So all four, and then an up pluck on the C string. And we'll just loop that. Okay. So once you've got that, if you're not changing chord, I was only plucking the G string and the A string. At the same time, so to demonstrate the intro, it would sound like this from the D minor to the G it would sound like this. Then all four, just the G and the A string, and then for the C G A minor, all four, then all four again. 
So it just it just accents the chord change. So it's only when you're changing chord that you're plucking all four strings at the same time. If you're not changing chord, it's just the outer two, but with the same up pluck. So I'll just demonstrate the intro for you. And we'll take it nice and slow. Three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, Okay, the part that I've designed for this song tries to really complement what Stevie's doing but at the same time being a little bit different from him and filling the spaces in a slightly different way. So at least half the time I'm doing these open thumb strums. Okay, most of the time in fact I'm doing these open thumb strums. So definitely not strumming across with a nail on the beat. You're really being loose with where the beat is and just strumming across the four strings um, in a really in a really loose way that's the only way I can describe it even in those fast chord changes okay which actual string is the one that hits on on the heartbeat of the music it doesn't really matter um, because if you're singing this song and doing this part with it it's your singing that dictates the landing point the heaviness of the weight of those beats thumb strums open thumb strums like this um, should be just really that kind of that kind of openness. Now I do occasionally match a similar thing to Stevie in plucking, um, like at the end of the introduction, for example, and at the end of the choruses, you see me on a C shape on my C chord up the neck, going. So that's essentially the same idea as Stevie outer strings on the beat, and C string on the offbeat and the lovely thing is because we're on a different voicing of the same chord as we strike the same plucking pattern we're in harmony so I'm harmonizing with his outer strings with my outer strings and I'm harmonizing his C string with my C string as I match that. The other time you'll see me doing that plucking pattern is my favorite bit of this part which is the G7 because you get this crunch really really nice the the G and the F together which are two notes of the of the G7 chord, so that's obviously going to work fine, but they're side by side in the scale, so it's a nice crunch. Um, and then just pinky up the A string to get your G chord, and then to the C and keep the plucking going. So you'll see that in the verse as well. Everything else is those really, really open thumb strums. Now with these, these ideas up this far up the neck, the thumb strums and the, the plucking pattern are sort of highlighting individual strings up the neck. So you might find more than when you're strumming through a pattern up the neck that the tuning is annoying you. And that is because it is very hard, even on a quite sophisticated instrument, when you get up the neck, uh, if you've tuned open and you're in tune on your G, C, E, A, it doesn't mean that these shapes are going to be bang on because, you know, this, the, you know, these strings are on a, a piece of wood which, which lives and breathes kind of like a human body, you know, it's got a little bit of give and take, heat in the room is going to make a difference. It's not, uh, it's not an exact science uh, to, to get these instruments in tune up the neck. So you might want to actually hold on your C chord as you're tuning, if you're using an electric tuner, don't tune open, tune to your your main chord of your song. And even then, if you've tuned to this C chord, you might find the other shapes. For example, I get quite frustrated with my, my G shape with the pinky that high. Um, if my C chord is in tune, it doesn't necessarily mean my G is in tune. So just take it as an opportunity to to really hone in on, on, those, on those sounds and on the decision making on your tuning uh, to try and find a happy medium that, that leaves you enjoying the sound of your instrument for the whole song. And by all means, take inspiration from my combination of open thumb strums and plucking patterns and come up with, with a third part. If you're playing along to me and Stevie in the, in the bulk of the video, you know, there's space in there for a third 
ukulele part where thumb strums are happening at a different time and plucking parts are happening at a different time while, while we're doing the opposites. So have fun with it.